I'm Justin McRoberts, and you are listening to the Title Pending Audio Series, a collection of readings focused on moments in my own creative history that I hope shed an inspired light on yours. Chapter 8, A Practice. Pick an image and stick with it. She's a waterfall. She's a sunset. She's the moon. Her eyes are like stars. Her arms are soft as silk. Her socks match her shirt. Well, even if all that is true of your love, I'd suggest picking one image rather than three or ten and dig in for a while. I bet your song's subject will appreciate it more, and so will your listeners. See, I think depth is what gives a lyric its power. Detail is one way to create depth. On the other hand, I think lyrically traipsing the globe in search for images with which to compare your love often comes off as shallow. Jumping from image to image and from comparison to comparison more often confuses and flattens your subject. At some point, the list of similes and metaphors ceases to reveal a subject and starts to muddy it instead, meaning and clarity get lost in the noise of competing images. Consider this excellent verse from the song Trainwreck by Glenn Phillips. She looked just like a train wreck that could have been avoided in a third world country by a long stretch of farmland where the waters had run high and run the topsoil down the river so that next year there would be no crops. Notice that Phillips doesn't just say she's an emotional mess Nor does he simply compare her to a train wreck and then move on to say that she's also like a car crash. He surrounds that train wreck with history and a setting of its own. And by the end of the 30-second description of Phillips' subject, I see that not only is she a mess, but that it didn't have to happen that way. I also know that her general circumstances are systemically broken and that the majority of what's wrong is entirely beyond her ability to affect leaving her future looking bleak as well. That's depth. And from one image loaded with specific, concrete, and powerful details. I had the Glenn Phillips song in mind while writing a song of my own called Driving by the Accident. Trainwreck is a good example of achieving excellence in lyrical depth by picking an image and staying with it. Driving by the accident is a good example of me attempting to imitate Glenn Phillips by hanging out around and focusing on my own chosen image, providing some detail and context. The lyrics go like this. Just what is it in a man that can't drive by the accident? He cranes his neck to turn his head and slows down. Does he feel the need to see that blood's as red as on TV and as thick? I went to the moment someone is driving past a roadside accident, climbed into the car and hit pause. What's happening in that driver's head? Why does he slow down? The way the image works in my mind, the driver is driving by the accident throughout the course of the whole song. I'm taking a longer look at that single moment rather than glancing at it and then moving on. Again, like most rules in my creative process, this isn't a universal principle. There are times when a sweeping, image-laden look at something is interesting and enjoyable. Yet, I still suggest making a discipline of the long, concentrated examination of a subject, like a meditation. If I'm writing a song, I have less than four minutes of space to fit all my thoughts and images into. I should try spending as much time as possible in the same place. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Title Pending Audio Series. If you've enjoyed listening and you'd like to take another step or two in the direction of your own creative process, navigate your way to yourcreativeprocess.info. And there you'll find an online course I've designed for you.